So let's look at a couple of properties of the C transform. For instance, the C transform is linear. And what we can say is if you go to the definition of the C transform, x of n, c to the minus n for m minus infinity to infinity, we can say that if we apply to an, an input alpha x of 1 of n plus beta x2 of n, we are going to see that the transform, and this is if it is linear, what we expect is that this is alpha x1 of n plus beta x2, sorry, of c, x2 of c. Right. So let's go ahead and apply this input as our x of n and see if we get that output showing that it obeys the principles of superposition and the transform is linear. Sum from minus infinity to infinity of alpha x1 rank plus beta x2 of n times c to the minus n. This is equal to sum alpha times x1 of n times c to the minus n. Since the sum is a linear operator, we can do this, right? We can partition the sum. Beta x2 of n times c to the minus n. And this, well, if we take alpha out, which does not depend on the sum, This is indeed the C transform of x1, and this is the C transform of x2. And so we get alpha times plus beta plus. You can see that this is exactly as what we expected in a linear system, and that's a result that you have for C transform obeys linearity, obeys the principle of superposition. So in addition to the linearity, there are other properties that we use quite a, quite a lot. Of course, linearity is the one we show. The C-transform is linear. The most used property of the C-transform is that a delay in the time domain gives you the same C-transform multiplied times c to the minus k. This is what we do, for instance, when we do x of m minus 1, the c transform of this will be c to the minus 1 times x of c. And this is why, by the way, in the block diagrams, the delay operator counts as a c to the minus 1 for each delay. Okay. Multiplication times the exponential, c divided the same transform with c divided by a, is linear scaling, you get the c <coughs> and the derivative. Important pairs. At the, at the very minimum, you should know that the c transform of the delta is 1, and this is very easy to derive, of the unit step is 1 over 1 minus c to the minus 1, and the regions of convergence is for absolute values of c greater than 1, and of a to the n, u of n is the same, 1 over 1 minus ac, and we use this quite a lot in, in infinity boost response filters, for c greater than a. So just look at the, at the properties we are not going exhaustively, you will see that they mimic the properties that we saw for the Fourier transform. And if you look at the discrete time Fourier transform, linearity, 
shifting, multiplication in the time domain, etc. This is going to apply to the C transform. Also, remember once again that if you evaluate the C transform for C equals e to the j omega hat, you end up with e x of e to the j omega hat, which is the discrete time Fourier transform. Same way as if you evaluate the Laplace transform around the j omega axis, you end up with the continuous time Fourier transform. Thank you.